In this video, I'm gonna show you three anxiety reducing techniques that you can use to battle back against the stress of being a founder. I'm Nick from Psychology Compass, the place where entrepreneurs go for lessons on achieving peak mental performance. The first thing that you need to understand about battling stress and anxiety is that stress depends on time. We have current stress, past stress, and future stress. And it all comes down to the brain. Because the brain represents time information differently, it also encodes and processes the corresponding stresses differently. And so what that means is that each one will have its own unique solution. So let's dive in and I'll walk through each one in turn. Lesson number one, battling present stress. When you're battling present stress and anxiety, it's a matter of getting a new perspective, pulling yourself out of the situation so that you can see the stress in a new light. And you can do this in two main ways. The first method is called the future self method. What you're gonna do here is imagine yourself and your business a year from now as your future self. And you're gonna look back to the current situation and to the current stress and you're gonna ask yourself specifically three questions. First, what would your future self think about the anxiety and about that current situation? Second, how would your future self rate the anxiety on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the absolute worst? And third, what would your future self understand and know about the situation having gone through it already that your current self doesn't know? The second method is called the past self method. Again, you're gonna think back within the last year of when you were facing a similar situation and a similar stress. And you're gonna ask yourself three questions. One, how would your past self rate the stress and anxiety? Again, on a scale of zero to 10. How long did the anxiety last? And third, how and when did the stress and anxiety eventually subside? Now for both the future self and the past self method, you want to be as specific as possible. Specific concrete thinking helps to trigger what psychologists call episodic memory. Detailed episodes give you and your brain an exact sense of what was done in the past and what could be done in the future. And detailed specific episodes are important for getting that new fresh perspective. Lesson number two, battling past stress. To the brain, when you're thinking about a past event, a past negative event, it's as if you're reliving the situation all over again. The brain doesn't know the difference and that's a bad thing. What you need to do is create what's called psychological distance. Psychological distance helps you deal more effectively with that past situation in a way that you're less immersed in all the negative emotions. And you can do this in three ways. First, you want to write in the third person, not in the first person. Our default response is to think and even write about our past experiences in the first person. So it would be, for example, I'm stressed and upset with my co-founders because they're not committed to the overall project timeline and my schedule. That's not what you want. Instead, you want to adopt the third person perspective. So in this case, it would be Nick is upset and stressed because his co-founders aren't committed to the overall project and his timeline. This simple shift in framing rewires the brain so that it gives it that psychological distance so that you can still effectively deal with that past situation. Second, you want to ask yourself why not what? So when thinking back to this past situation, you want to ask yourself why certain negative emotions were felt as opposed to what they were. You want to help yourself give, give your sense of a narrative as, as a series of events unfolding in time as opposed to this thing that's causing you anxiety in the past. And third, you want to reconstrue, not recollect. So again, when recalling that past event, you want to try to uncover some sort of insight from that situation. You don't want to just think about it as something that happened. Instead, you want to pull out the lesson that you learned. And a good way to do that is to imagine another person having gone through that situation, not once, but not twice, even three or four times. And ask yourself, what would they have learned in that situation that you can apply to yourself and your past stress? Lesson number three, battling future stress. And there's three basic things to understand before we dive in with this lesson. First, future stress happens when there's too much uncertainty in your world. Second, uncertainty is resolved by creating mental constraints and limits. And third, 
The best way to create mental constraints is by creating what's called a goal hierarchy. And I'll walk through what that is in four separate steps. Step one is to create the hierarchy, or I should say create a number of different hierarchies. So you're gonna look at all the things that you have in your business in terms of goals and things that you want to and that you need to accomplish. And you're gonna construct a hierarchy. So let me explain. At the very top of each of your hierarchies is gonna be a single major goal, what's also called your being goal. These are the things in your life and in your business that don't change, your values, your missions, your principles. And underneath that one being goal for a single hierarchy are gonna be nested layers of your more minor goals, or what we often call your doing goals. These are the day-to-day -day tasks that you engage in that, in an ideal sense, directly fulfill and are in service of that top being goal. So for example, at the very top will be your major being goal, which could be, in this case, being a purposeful and effective CEO and leader. And then all of your minor doing goals that are nested below that will be the interactions and the meetings and the decisions that you make that are in direct service of that top major being goal. Now I should say with one strong caveat that that is in an ideal world when there's not too much uncertainty and future stress. And this leads me to the second step. So step two is to locate and address where the broken links exist between your doing goals and your being goals. This is where the future uncertainty and this is where your future stress sits. So you need to look at all of the hierarchies that you've created and pinpoint exactly where those links are decoupled. The third step is to then reorganize your hierarchies. So for all of the decoupled links between the doing and the being, you need to take those tasks, those activities, those goals and rearrange things. And if it means to get rid of one of those tasks altogether, then do it. This is the time in your life and in your business to reorganize so that you can prioritize what is important to you and to your business. And the fourth step is to economize action and stick to the plan. Assuming that you've constructed, reorganized, and identified your core goal hierarchies properly, you can trust the design, you can trust the system. So that any time you act with any behavior or with any decision, you know that those minor doing goals are in fact in direct service of that top major being goal. And ultimately that means you will resolve that future uncertainty and you will resolve that future stress. So to recap what we've covered, the main thing that you need to understand is that there's different stress depending on time. So when you are interacting in your day-to-day -day behaviors, making your decisions and running your business, and you feel that sting of anxiety and stress happening, ask yourself, is it a present stress, is it a past stress, or is it a future stress? And apply the appropriate lesson that will work best.